it's Losi from iLosi and welcome to All Things Events where you learn all the tips and tricks on how to be in an events industry. So welcome to today's video which is all about an introduction to YouTube, a background about myself, what I do and how I got to work into the industry. So my name is Sipesike Losi. I do prefer being called Losi from iLosi. I am 28 years of age. I'm born and raised in the Eastern Cape Gramstown and I did all my high school years in Gramstown. I then moved to Cape Town after high school. I moved to Cape Town to study travel and tourism and fashion. Fashion is a um, second qualification that I studied for. That is when I got to work into the industry, which was 2012. So what happened was I was at school um, with obviously my um, schoolmates, actually my college mates. So this is what used to happen. So you know when you're studying fashion and design and all of that stuff, there will be like sometimes you would do like your sewing your drawing so I used to every time when I have to do sewing and drawing I used to carry like my 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 speaker and I would play music very loud I would play actually music for the whole entire class and I would sing along so I pretty much have like energy where I don't even know where it comes from but I remember being friends or starting a friendship because of the songs that I used to listen to um, so my, my, my college mates, um, they used to be like, oh, we love your songs, oh, who sings this song, or oh my god, I love this song, and all of that stuff. So we used to like pretty much chat and talk about songs and obviously what we were doing at the time. And I remember what used to happen um, during break time. So break time, we were... So the school was in Woodstock and during break time, what they would do, they would go and buy food at um, the cafes around, restaurants around and some of the hotels around the school. And me, I used to go to the Spaza shop, which was around the corner. And also I used to go to Checkers because obviously I did not have money and I was not, um, I was not, uh, I would say rich compared to them, you know? So um, I remember after coming back from the from from um, from our lunch, I I then said to them, "Yo, you guys, you have money, you know." And they were like, "No, Lucy, we don't have money. We're not rich. It's just that we work. We work in events. Actually, you should um, join uh, events because I think you would be a very good fit." And also you have so much energy. I did not even, you know, think twice about it. I asked for a number and they gave me the number. I took the number, I sent a text if I did not call and I was acquiring uh, in terms of the job, like student jobs. I remember getting the call back text message inviting me for an interview to join the company and I remember that day when the interview came I was wearing I think it happened in Clermont I was wearing uh, black leggings uh, a, a black uh, see-through top and brown shoes so I got to the venue and what I realized was that it was one of those interviews where there's like 50 other people. So it's like a group interview. We got to the interview and we met this young, blonde, skinny, um, Caucasian lady. Her name was just Brett at the time. Maybe she got married and she changed her name. I remember meeting her and she introduced herself and then she also said she is the owner of the company. She told us about the rates, um, what to expect in the company and also the types of events that we'll be doing, the positions and pretty much gave us a whole brief about um, events. So I remember when she was ending the interview, she said that um, she's got an, um, an event coming up on the weekend, it's the GS Festival, so she was asking if any of us are interested and available for work. She did not even finish what she was saying. I, I just went on my phone and I was texting her and I was like, yes, please, I'm available for work. Great. Two days later, I got an invite, mm. uh, a booking confirmation stating that I am booked for the weekend. I need to come to the venue. I need to be dressed in black pants, not jeans, a white collared shirt. Um, that also, I need to be able to wear a tie on that white collared shirt and black shoes or pumps, not um, not sneakers. I was so excited. I was very excited. I remember calling my mom from the Eastern Cape and I was like, Mama, 
So that one send the mali and I need to buy like the uniform. So my mom sent me 400 rand. I took that 400 rand. I went to Mr. Price to buy all the uniform that I needed. I got everything and I remember going to the first shift. Guys, this happened eight years, actually nine since it's 2020 now. It happened nine years ago. Yes. So I remember going to my first job. I'm all dressed nice and black, uh, black and white. I'm wearing my um, black um, shoes and had my hair nice tight a little bit of like some gloss just a little bit of eyeliner and i was looking um, fine i know? got to the venue yeah. when we got there we met obviously the, the 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 owner or the boss at the time and then we were also working with some chefs so it was a catering company that we were working with i think it's a sense of taste yeah so we're working for with a sense of taste and I remember the briefing, they just told us, okay, we need to take these platters, we need to walk around and give it to the guests, clear up, and just make sure everybody has something to eat. Right? So Mina or Mumna, <laughs> coming from Gramstown and not knowing, you know, a lot of things, I struggled to remember the names on the platters or the food that was on the platters because Usiswako, mm, that food was it was it was too fancy. I did not know the names, and they would tell me, oh, "Okay, this is bruschetta with a bit of salmon and this and this," and I'll just remember just like one word, and then I'm like, "Okay, I got it." Because the reason why they told us we need to know exactly what we're serving is because, um, say, somebody is allergic to something, so we kind of have had no choice but to know exactly what we're serving in case our guests are allergic to whatever that we are serving. So I did that, and I remember every time I would forget the names, I would go to the other like waiters, and I would be like, hey, babe, um, what is this again? What is this again? And it was all a teamwork. They really helped me out. I really did well. I really tried to push myself until I moved to the bar I moved to the bar it was a bit easier uh, moving to the bar because all we had to do is just pour drinks uh, cocktails um, if it was not mojitos it was probably strawberry decorate or something and it was very easy because one person would just uh, pour ice the next person will pour the you know the ingredients and the other one would just put on the mixer crush it so we all kind of we actually all worked together and that was my first shift after the whole thing we had to clean up the venue struck down everything yeah, pack up sorry we had to pack up and then clean the whole entire venue which we did it was very cool and then we signed off after we signed off um the boss said thank you so much yeah i was happy um, she was very impressed and then she called me for the next jobs i pretty much after that event i worked if each and every event that she had even the people that i was hired with at the time every time they would see me at some events they were like ah oh, but when i know see like you're always working you're always working because i was very willing to learn pushed myself to the limit i was always available i was amped i was energetic i was happy i was excited you know i was very excited it's because the first time that i was working and i she was very impressed she was very impressed i got booked to all the other events and thank you to thanks to my my schoolmates because those are the people that actually linked me up so i got linked up again to do promotions it started off with um, a company I think that company they used to do all the the in-store your pick and pays your shop rides and your macros promotions um, they was do food will do bread and we'll my do promotion I started off with coffee so I remember the first um, uh, brand that I worked with it was uh, Dao Echbet so I got to I got introduced to the promotions and I did the Dao Echbet's coffee my first shift was at pick and pay um sunning dale so what used to happen was that if you are um, say you stay in parklands they would um, look around the um the shops that are around your area and then they will uh, put you um in in the same area so yeah. i was booked at for pick um, and pay signing deal which is in parklands that's where i used to be based in cape town and i remember my first shift i literally sold everything on the shelves 
it was it was fun it was great and it was winter when i used to um promote coffee and the reason why i was able to sell everything was because i used to give out samples so i used to get to the shop and obviously sign in where the stuff signs in it's like now i'm working at pick and pay it's just that i'm wearing like a different apron and all of that stuff the company that i was working with at the time they gave me all the samples in terms of like the coffee the teaspoons the milk the um, sugar sweetener pretty much everything that you need to make coffee so i used to carry those around yes i used to carry those around and i would make sure that um, i've got all, all the stuff that i need for my promotion and then when i get to pick and pay i just ask them for hot water i put it on my flowers and then i had also a table um, that i can um, I set it up when I get to the venue and then I would be stationed by the coffee aisle where I used to be stationed and also I would just every time a customer comes in my aisle I would just approach them like hi sir hi ma'am can I please make you um, a cup of coffee and they were very like some they were very shocked like what coffee and I'm like it's the Dawak Bits coffee and I got all I had all the ranges because they would have like the decaf coffees and the other ones and they're like no I'll have a decaf or no I'll have you know your normal coffee and I'd ask them if they want um, with sugar brown sugar white sugar or a sweetener most of them they actually preferred a sweetener and I would also get like one of those uh, customers uh, that are like no this is not how you make coffee you first put all the ingredients together this is how you should make it you put the milk last or you put the water last and all of that stuff so I got to learn a lot not just from the training that I got from the agency that I was signed um, under but also some of the customers they would come and say no this is how you should do it some were experts some were just you know regular customers that just prefer their coffee the way that they want right. them so when I was doing promotion I you know obviously when you do promotions you meet other promoters and some they're like oh no i also work for this company no i also work for this company we share the numbers we share the contacts and we contact them i moved from coffee i then moved to alcohol i did alcohol promotions where i used to promote sky vodka cruise vodka I did boulevard i did, I did pravda i did pretty much anything that you can think of you know from your moet to your glen morangi uh taylor moju glen bivet literally everything that has to do with alcohol because sometimes it would be like an event where we need to host this or do activations or asha and it's like an alcohol event and sometimes it used to be like promotions where we have to literally go into bottle stores promote um the alcohol sometimes we have samples you know um call they call them tasters yeah we had the tasters we would they give us one bottle so that we can um, give it to all the customers in the store to taste the alcohol if it's a new brand that we're promoting and all of that stuff so that's pretty pretty much the background that i have in terms of like promotions um it was definitely um in-store alcohol promotions and activations and festivals as well it's pretty um, much the same thing but at a light a larger scale we used to um, focus more on you know the vip sections where we had to make sure the vip people have the food we're serving whatever that we need to serve the drinks are fine um sometimes i'll be waitressing sometimes i'll do the bar sometimes i'll do activations promoting hostessing i, I had so much money that um, at some point I told my mom, you know what, you don't have to like send me money for like uh, pocket money or for school anymore. I can, I can pay my own fees, which is what I did. Um, yeah. I worked in events as a waiter, I moved into bartending, I worked as a head waiter. Um, I used to serve all the main tables so if i'm not serving the bride and the groom i'm serving the family or the bridesmaids or the groom maids um, i used to obviously like report to my manager at the time i used to make sure that um all the other ladies that are booked and guys they are at the venue on time and stuff so i was basically like I wouldn't say manager but I was a team leader so I moved up into being a team leader I worked with various types of people um, we also moved to working in Pal, Pal at the, the wine farms in Cape Town so we worked in Pal, we worked in um, Stellenbosch we worked in um, Constantia we worked 
uh, and quite a number of uh, wine farms but the popular one that we used to work at it was Nantes if you know it you will probably agree with me that it's probably the best venue in SA I'm telling you so um, I used to do a lot of weddings there I'll still be a team leader head waiter barman I did a lot of that uh, I even left school I think second year I didn't go back to school because work was 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 hectic you know I was getting booked all the time and it was very demanding and I was making so much money and I actually loved it um, I remember when I had to do like some of the school projects like working in um, fashion week doing production behind the scenes. I think there was a company called Red Hot Productions that used to do a fashion week um, behind the scenes so. as students. We used to volunteer and we used to like work behind the scenes, taping shoes, making sure all the garments are ironed and just making sure obviously everything is ready before the fashion show starts and i worked for different designers from your adrian curtis behind the scenes of fabiani um stefania molland um zoo zoo something but there was a lot of designers that we used to work under you know um and that's what we did um as a student but what used to happen was that every time I work, like I do like school projects or I do like fashion week and stuff like that, I never used to get paid. So you have to uh, use your own money to for transportation and you um, used to work until late and you don't get paid. You will have to pretty much find your way home and all of that stuff. So it was very difficult for me to continue with the whole fashion, whereas I was not getting anything with when that. I'm working, you know, because all the students we used to volunteer. And also in terms of designing, um, at the time we had to obviously make all the clothes and garments and everything else for models because obviously we are not model types. So if you're not skinny enough, you can't make clothes that can fit you. So we always had to make clothes for other people and though sometimes those people they never used to buy the clothes mm, so you and i actually really loved fashion but i think also it was one of those things whereby you know when you after school especially from the kind of background that i'm, I'm, I'm coming from we most of the people that i know or most of the people that i grew up with we never knew what we wanted to do you know um i got lucky to be introduced into the events industry um, when I was still studying because that, that, um, that's one of the um, things that I've done and I just fell in love with and I could, don't get tired at all like I could do like events for like straight two weeks non-stop eight an hour and I won't get tired because I, I just really love doing events I love the unpredictable um, positions that sometimes I'm thrown under or I'm put under I like different environments going to different venues meeting different clients meeting different um, suppliers you know, the, and the weddings <sighs> okay the weddings I I remember doing some of the biggest greatest probably the best events weddings like they were big you know. so that is it for today i uh, i hope that you do like this content please do give any suggestions in terms of um things that are related to events business and just managing of stuff well, thank you so much for watching this video please do not forget to like comment and subscribe to my channel i'll see you on my next upload thank you